All right. Hello, everyone. I'm back again. This time I'm playing Dead Secret. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it's my understanding I'll probably get all the way through this today, because uh, it's just a few hours gameplay. Uh, uh, one of the first things that I noticed, hence the title, is that there's five different endings. A, B, C, D, and S. So, I don't know if S is like the best ending, or a secret ending, or whatnot. Anyway, uh, from what I know, it's like the a professor, like a, maybe a college professor is like dead, or something. I don't know. Um, it just seemed like an interesting story, and... Um, was recommended to me, uh, so I am gonna give it a shot. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? Oh, I'm just walking now. Okay. All right, here Harris we go. Bullard was found dead in his study five days ago. Nobody believes me, but I think he was murdered. This house in the middle of nowhere holds the secret. There's a story hiding here. And I'm going to cover it. If I'm right, there are four major suspects. Graham Wellington. Josie Herrera. Cynthia Peckman. Bobby Sawyer. I'm not leaving until I find out what happened. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so a professor did die, it seems like. What is it? Oh, uh, if I click, then I just walk over. Oh, it's like a point and click deal? Oh, okay. That's fine. I'm sure this door leads to the room where Bullard's body was found, but it's locked. Um, okay, so this is us. I don't think there's like a pause function or anything. I can do this to look around, but I can also just use my mouse, so it doesn't really make a difference. Okay. Uh, a small parcel tied tightly with twine. I can't open it with my bare hands. Okay. Ooh, small key. Investigate the crime scene. Okay. Missing a knob. Can open it. Just observing for later. Reclusive professor found dead in home September 23rd, 1965. Uh, is that governor? Gove? What? K.S. Uh, Harris Bullard, a retired, co so retired college teacher, was found dead in his home Monday. The body was discovered by Bobby Sawyer, who worked part-time for Bullard, running odd jobs. A police investigation has concluded that Bullard died of natural causes. He was 63. Bullard moved into his home on Rampo Way several years ago, but was rarely seen about town. He was a private and reclusive man who seemed to have few friends. Bullard raised eyebrows last year when a former student, a pretty young woman named Josie Herrera, moved in with him. Oh. Uh, Bullard's will, written in 1957, so eight years ago, leaves his entire estate to his ex-wife, Cynthia Peckman. Uh, Peckman will reportedly sell the house and its contents immediately. Harris was a genius in his discipline, said Graham Wellington, a former colle uh, colleague. The field of neuroscience is considerably poorer without him. Found dead in the study, police Bobby Sawyer runs errands, and he found the body. Josie Herrera is a live-in assistant. Cynthia Peckman is the ex-wife, and she inherited his entire estate. Graham Wellington is a former colleague of Bullard, who had apparently high praises for him. Okay, good info here. An old piano, it's blocking the way. Sure aren't wasting time selling off old stuff. By they, they mean uh, Cynthia. Yeah. Hand truck. Hmm. 
I mean, why would I want to go outside, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's go in here first, just because... Never mind. Okay, this is the crime scene. that happen every time it's only september but today is cold and dark fall is here i guess this is really the middle of nowhere even for kansas just wheat as far as the eye can see did i hear i'm so tired of the idiots in this town i'm just keep clicking it kept giving me different responses so oh hello the snow woman adapted from an original translation by la lefkot Lafcadio? I'm so probably butchering that. Heard. Uh, an old man. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this down. This is a little loud. An old man and his son climbed a mountain to collect firewood. It began to snow heavily, and unable to make it back home, they decided to pass the night in a small hut. Uh, in the middle of the night, the young man awoke to see that the, bo the door had blown open. Excuse me. Um, a tall woman with long white hair and a white kimono was leaning over his father, blowing her breath upon him. When she saw that the son was awake, she said, You are a handsome young man, so I will let you live. But if you ever speak of this to anyone, your life shall be forfeit. In the morning, the young man found his father frozen and dead. He climbed down from the mountain alone and never spoke of the episode. A year later, he met and married a young, beautiful girl. They had children together and were happy, but the night of his father's death still weighed heavily on his mind. One night, after having a bit too much to drink, the man told his wife about his encounter with a snow woman. She was furious. You promised... You promised not to tell, she screamed. And before his eyes, she became the tall woman with long black hair and a white kimono. What? If it were not for our children, I would end your life here and now, but I will spare you for their sake. But if anything ever happens to them, you shall pay the price. And with that, she melted into the wind and was gone. Jeez. Okay, creepy. Creepy, creepy. These books are by the same author, Lafcadio... All right, I'm going to call him Laugh. Laugh Hearn. Uh, it looks like one is missing. What does this say? The Romance of Mil of the Milky Way. Japan. An attempt at interpretation. Um, in ghostly Japan in Japanese fairy tales. Sure. Dictionaries and language reference. It looks like a lot of these books aren't even in English. Same stuff all the way down. Yeah, okay. Hmm. The small box. Let's get a better look at it on the desk. One of the buttons is missing. Hmm. Where am I? I came in through there. Okay. Uh, let's keep going in order. I want to be sure I hit everything. A pillow. Regular lamb. Never seen a map laid out like this. There's a spot marked with an X on it. It's a clay statue. That's what it looks like. Issues of the Journal of Physiology and a bunch of medical books with names I can't pronounce. A quantitative description of membrane current and its application to conduction and excitation in the nerve by Hodgkin and Huxley. This is doctor stuff. I thought Bullard was some sort of engineer. 
Well, he was a neuroscientist, wasn't he? Lots of difficult sounding medical books and journals. Okay. That's been well established. Ooh, nope. There's a page from a manuscript here. A man who could see with his skin. In 1926, I met a man who could see with his skin. His eyes were sealed with wax and bandaged, yet he remained aware of the room around him. We held up signs which he read and fingers which he counted even when we stood behind him. After the performance, I gave him $200 for the secret. He explained that he could see as long as some part of his skin remained exposed to the air. He described it as a shift in the wind or a slight breeze on his face, the subtle motion of the hair on his arm. After years of focus and practice, he had developed the ability to form a mental image of his surroundings based only on these slight sensations. Uh, this man had achieved a form of ideophocus. Granted, he only had access to a very narrow range of sensory information, but the result was powerful. I immediately resolved uh, to discover the secret of his ability. Now, almost four decades later, I'm very close. There's a newspaper clipping here. It reads, Eyeless Joe, found dead in hotel. Weird. Hmm. Weird indeed. No record player. Wait, it said what? It's damp? Oh, it's empty. Sure. Picture of a woman. She's wearing a white kimono and standing in the snow. Of course she is. Just checking everything. Regular library. Everything's covered in dust. Gotta be something here, yeah. Guess not. This one specifically. What's this? It looks like a tiny camera lens. Okay. Have that now. I guess I can't see in this little corner here. It's okay. Doesn't turn on. Guess it's broken. Uh, one of Bullard's diplomas another one pretty advanced degrees this one is from the University of Chicago 1935 boy I'd love to visit Chicago these masks make me uncomfortable it kind of feels like they are looking at me what did they see in this room I think I've seen masks like this before maybe they're Japanese it's a weird looking face okay quantum mechanics functional analysis not exactly light reading Just checking everything. Don't mind me. Sometimes there's stuff going on. Okay. Um, well, I think... Just the crime scene there. That we've looked at everything. I don't know what this is. I click on the painting. It's very bleak. Hmm. Where the is that this house in the background? Yeah, that's weird. Gove. Is that where we're at, I wonder? Because I saw that in the newspaper. Okay, all right, let's go to the desk. What do we got? Something's typed out here, but the paper is so far into the feeder that I can't pull it out. Yeah, can I? that no dial tone it's a note with a foreign symbol on it underneath it reads north hmm. Harris Bullard I am woodcutter your past has caught up with you it is over Who is Woodcutter? Yeah, it wasn't exactly... 
Can open the package in the other room, sure. I also have a camera lens. Another one? We're in two of them now, yeah. Okay. Have I read this? No. Joe, something is after me. It's creeping around the house, trying to get in. I'm sure of it. I heard food step. I heard footsteps outside and creaking on the roof. It's not safe here. I've taken the ideal focal lenses. Interesting. From their normal location and hidden them in my study. I've sent you a package that you'll know what to do with. Check the map for the mask. As usual, X marks the spot. Harris. P.S. The sequence is west, east, north. So, Joe, that's going to be Josie Herrera, right, his assistant. So, the lenses I found are ideofocal lenses? I don't know what, really what that would mean. The ideofocal ability... Was it a way, sort of, a, uh, a super sense of sorts? And I don't know what the lenses would allow... they were a part of a camera or something anyway uh so x marks the spot sequence is west east north ballard hit something in this bullard hit something in this room very suspicious this will be a great hook for my opening paragraph to get out alive that is check all of these west east and north eh Same stuff as if I click on the other window. Um, I bet this will be locked, but try to see. Yeah, it's okay. See if there's something. I mean, may as well take the low-hanging fruit before we try to dive any deeper for no reason. Wow, that probably shouldn't have scared me. But it did. That scared me very badly. Okay. Anyway, it's addressed to Jay Herrera and was sent from downtown Gove. Gove. Parcels tied up and tied. I need something to cut the twine if I want to peek inside. I have scissors. Press B or right mouse for inventory. Oh, it's the missing book. It says Quidon, or Quidon, on the cover, whatever that means. The author is laughing. Yeah. Old book. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, I don't know if this is what I'm supposed to do, but I'm gonna gonna attempt to. Yeah. Something jammed back there. A flat triangular wedge with some sort of foreign writing on it. Aha! It's for this. Okay. What is going on here? weird. I could have sworn the TV was off before. It was. Alright. Um, here's the, yeah, collect the documents. Um, The sequence is west, east, north. When? <laughs> okay. West, east, north. I 
think this is north, from what I saw. So then it would either be here, here, here. Oh, I got it. It's a mask. I see. The lenses fit into the mask's eye sockets. It's like a weird pair of goggles. But did I put them in him already? Yeah, hello there. <sighs> Who was that? Um, yeah. Oh, this lens is there. Okay. Yikes. What is this? Oh, I, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. That was not my favorite thing that's ever happened to me. This was the mask. Um, okay. Okay. What's in my objectives? Or rather, I have the mask. I can't. Oh, well. Okay. Um, what's this say? Did that. Um, okay, maybe I'll look out here with the mask on. I'm not sure. page taped to the back. Okay. Josie, if you're reading this note, then something must have happened to me. I may be dead or missing. If so, you're the only person who can save our research. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, okay. Uh, this game is not boring. I'm just, I don't know why I always yawn around this time, especially if I'm talking a lot. Sorry. Uh, the truth is that I'm being threatened. It started before I left college. I uh, Sorry, uh, before I left the college. I get notes every few months from somebody calling himself Woodcutter. What he wants is access to our research. He wants me to turn over our plans for the Lunar Dream Apparatus. Josie, my life is in danger. Woodcutter knows things, secret things about my past that nobody should know. I will not yield to simple blackmail, but lately the threats have escalated. I am sure that I'm being watched at, this ho at the house. I sometimes hear things on the other side of the wall. Yesterday, with the mask on, I thought I saw somebody reaching for me. It's a warning from my subconscious. I am no longer safe here. I've locked our research away in the safe upstairs. I want you to retrieve it and leave. Destroy everything before you go. Burn down, burn the house down if you have to. Just get the research and get out of here. Head for a big city where it's easy to hide. I'm counting on you, Joe. Don't let our work fall into their hands, Ferris. I knew there was more to this story. Whatever Bullard was mixed up in, I bet there's evidence in that safe. Who's Woodcutter? Open the safe upstairs. I am not so sure we'll find out who Woodcutter is, but we will do our damnedest. I hear, like, something when I have that on. Anyway, I found something, but now I, I still, I don't think I can go upstairs unless 
something's changed. Tyler's death is definitely fishy. Better stop and review my notes. Harris Bullard's body was found by Bobby Sawyer. Bobby ran odd jobs for Bullard. Could he have done it? He certainly had the opportunity. Bullard was scared. He worried about losing secret research. Blackmail. I knew this would be a scoop. Somebody wanted his research. He must have been killed for it. Bullard was being blackmailed by Woodcutter. That's it. Woodcutter. What is this supposed to mean? This is the kind of juicy detail I came here to find. Okay, to sell this story to saw to sell this story, I need some real evidence. Let's go check out that safe upstairs. I I'm assuming it's this way. Yeah. Okay. I am scared. Left or right? Let's start left. Bedroom. Okay, here's uh, first things first. <laughs> hey, buddy. Something's holding the lid closed. There's a small dial mounted on the front. It might say reporter on my desk, but I spend most of my time at the standard making coffee for my editor. I'm tired of writing the gossip column. This story is my shot at the big leagues. When I prove that Bullard was murdered, all the big papers will come calling. I'll finally escape this backwater town. This is it. The chance I've been waiting for. Mm. That was what the handprint was for. Interesting, to say the least. There's something right there. What do we have here? Dear Diary, today is an anniversary. It was five years ago today that I found Dad's name on an old research paper at the U of C, so University of Chicago, I think. He had written it in 1933, eight years before I was born. He didn't know he had gone to college. I'm sorry, what? Oh, I didn't know he had gone to college. Um, I had never really thought about his life. He was just a name on my birth certificate. Dad ran out on Mama after the war. He had gone off to fight and just never came back. When he stopped writing, Mama thought he'd been killed. I remember her crying at the kitchen table. The war ended, life went on, Mama died without ever finding what had happened to him, finding out what had happened to him. I used to hate him, hated the idea of him, hated my mother for a little bit too. I figured Dad was just a deadbeat who ditched Mama because he didn't want a kid. But when I found his name in the library, something changed. I couldn't stop thinking about him. Deadbeat dads don't study physics, do they? What is he doing now? What does he look like? Is he married to somebody else? I traced him here to Kansas, but finding him is taking longer than I had expected. So this is Josie's room? Uh, 233. College and studied physics i don't know if that was like an undergrad thing but they said that bullard was a neuroscientist so i don't know if that's the same or what must be josie herrera's room aha i found something bobby here is your latest chapter all typed up. I think this story is becoming very interesting, and I'm sure you can get it published. I hope you don't mind, but I made a few edits and inserted a few details here and there. Looking forward to your next chapter, Joe. The Crystal Cave by Bobby Sawyer, Chapter 3. So, Bobby was also a writer? 
The man had been dead for hours when they found him. He had crawled halfway up Sarah Johnson's porch steps before coming to rest just outside the door, his feet dangling off the edge like spaghetti that somebody had cooked too long. Old Sarah just about keeled over when she saw him. The man was inked. Weird lines crisscrossed every inch of his skin like Indian war paint. Even his eyelids were marked. The tattoos made him look like some African shaman out of National Geographic, except that he was wearing he was uh, white and was wearing work overalls two sizes too big. Jimmy, the only cop on duty at 6 in the morning, thought that maybe the man had escaped from a chain gang. Jimmy was never the sharpest tool in the shed. Detective Henderson, though, he's as smart as a whip. He had photos taken of the body, all naked and everything. He put the pictures up on his wall at the little station in the middle of town, started moving them around, turning them this way and that, until the tattoo edges started to line up. It took him three days, but he put it together just like a jigsaw puzzle, until the thick lines all connected to the thin lines, and the overall shape became clear. Would you believe it? It was a map. When the coroner cut the man open, he found his insides were all twisted into the same map. And when they sawed into the man's bone, they found the map there too, etched into the marrow like rings on a tree stump. Well, that's how we first found our way to the cave. Jesus. Aspiring fiction writer, hopefully. Hoping Bobby with his writing. Yep. Sure thing, sure thing. Mirror time, let's get this over with. Yep. Josie moved in with Bullard last year after he retired. The busybodies had a field day. Not much of interest. That's it, huh? Okay. Hero says helicopter may win Vietnam War. Uh. Da Nang? So Vietnam. That's the place, I think, because that's how it was the last entry for the newspaper. A Medal of Honor winner from Kansas said today the helicopter may win the war in South Vietnam. Marine Major Douglas Big Tom Thompson, 39, of Fortuna. Or Fortuna, I don't know, uh, won the nation's highest military award during World War II, manning a bazooka in Iwo Jima. Um, probably butchering a lot of the stuff. Major Thompson is attached to the Marine Helicopter Squadron, operating along the coast and northern border of South Vietnam. Uh, Thompson's father lives in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, as a leather neck... Thompson destroyed 16 Japanese strong points and killed 75 Japanese on uh, Iwo Jima in 1945. He is the only Medal of Honor winner currently serving in Vietnam. The most effective weapon is the Viet, the Viet Cong use is terror. The big pipe smoking Marine said the most effective one against them is the helicopter. Okay, not super sure what that means. No time to rest. You said it, partner. The window is painted shut. It's not budging. It's not budging. Got it. Well, anywho, take another look at this, I suppose. Um, all right, whatever. I'll go right now. I think that I've done everything that I can here. I don't know what I'm
I'm supposed to do with that information. Let's just leave. Well, first things first. Nothing, eh? Okay. Well then, let's keep a move on. Full of logs. What's this? Play it with a circular dial. Okay, might help. Pile of wood, nothing special. I'm gonna knock over this lamp. What the? Oh. Bill told me to cover Bullard's death, but he's just looking for gossip about the young assistant. But I took it seriously, did the research, followed every lead, like a real journalist would. It paid off. I found something everybody else missed. A note, a half thought, scribbled in the margins of the coroner's draft report. It read, hypothermia in summer? Good point. Good point. Okay. It's probably his room, I guess, say. Eh? Ah. H. Bullard, Daily Log, November 2nd, 1964. We did a test run of the IDEO focal lenses today. At first, we did not know how to interpret the results, but now I believe they are working better than we had anticipated. Instead of an unfiltered uh, stream of sensory information, what we are seeing is subconscious memory. The lenses distort in response to visual stimuli that the wearer has some knowledge of. They see what my, my conscious mind cannot. Josie proposed that what we are really doing is mining dreams. Dreams, after all, are a form, dreams are, after all, a form of ideofocus, a time when the subconscious comes forward and shows us truth that we might other, not otherwise recognize. What we are striving for is unrestricted access to dream thought. As a control mnemonic, the mask works pretty well. I could tell that Josie was dubious at first, but now she understands. Subconscious thought is potentially dangerous to the subject. We will need a physical object to enable the mind to compartmentalize, providing the wearer with some degree of cognitive protection. A permanent augmentation will require a much larger apparatus. We'll need some other kind of focus mnemonic to help the brain control the deluge of dream information it will receive. Something large and ubiquitous, the moon, perhaps. The lenses in this weird mask, dream thought, the moon. Oh. Was that, was I supposed to do that? Ready to move. Okay. Uh, well, I'm uh, go to the safe last. Come over here. I've already been over to these places. An old photo of two men on a ship. James Lowry and Harris Bullard. What in the... Okay. 
is not good. Everything in the drawers has been packed up already. Is that so? Okay. Harris Bullard, I am Woodcutter. Cutter. I know your secret. James Lowry sends his regards. What? This woodcutter character is my prime suspect. I bet his blackmail scheme went south, so he killed Bullard. That sounds like it probably makes a decent amount of sense, doesn't it? Okay, let's come here. Here's the safe, but it's locked. Oh, shoot. Find the safe combination. Okay. Uh... Well, I think I did everything here. The only thing I can think to do is look out the window with goggles. Probably doesn't make any difference. It doesn't. Dude sitting up there, so... I don't know what's happening. We're gonna go back and see if this circular dial... Uh, means anything to the the other room where our friend is at. <laughs> Let's find out. Is that not right? What? Oh, that's got it. Oh. There we go. Mm hmm. Small wooden knob. That helps. That's for downstairs. Looks like Josie's stuff. Lennon's books. Dear diary. Today, Dr. Bullard and I built a chassis for his new weather device. It's weird as usual. Um, I don't really get why we're building it, but Dr. Bullard doesn't explain things. Tomorrow, I need to go buy some bottles for the base. Today was Mama's birthday. She would have been 54. I bet she would have liked the work I'm doing now. I hope she's proud somewhere. I had the nightmare again last night. It's been over a year since I had it last, but it never changes. I've written about it over and over, but the writing seems to help, so I'll tell you about it again. I'm five years old in our apartment in Chicago. It's dark. I have gotten out of bed to get some water, but I hear something coming from Mama's room. I peek in and see a tall man, tall man standing over her. He has his hands around her neck. He's breathing hard, and in the cold night air, I can see his breath. It streams out of his mouth like smoke and seems to cover her. There isn't any breath coming from Mama. She's already dead, but he continues to, to squeeze. When I was a kid, I thought the dream would go away when I grew up. It hasn't. Rats. The safe combination isn't here. Pretty sure I saw a drawer with a missing knob downstairs, though. That I did. Run? Is that an actual person? I just thought that it was like a... What the hell is happening? Oh, this is gonna be great! It's gonna be that stupid long hair... White can whatever word I forgot the word the, the like garb looking thing
<sighs> this feels like the right way. What? What is going on here? What in the hell? I don't know if this is a dream or if it's real. Well, hello there. Uh, the man in the raincoat, was that the woodcutter? Can't get it with one arm. I must have hit my head. Not leaving until I figure out what's going on. Well, now where am I? Dr. Bullard, I followed your instructions t to calibrate the Tempest Prognosticator. Uh, your concern was correct. The bottles must be placed from heaviest to lightest to produce accurate results. Um, the actual... Wait, what happened? Evac 6. Oh, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, maybe you've played this game before. I'm not sure, but I'm about... 45 minutes into it, so hope you enjoy, and maybe if you have uh, played it, then just watching me <laughs> suffer through the the uh, this weird snow person, maybe, I'm assuming. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, oh, okay, sure. Um, I also have a Discord in, um, in my... Uh, in my about section, if you wanted to follow that. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. The actual weight depends on the leech used, so I have to recalibrate every time we want to take a reading. Also note that the recalibration is required if the battery in the base dies. However, the device works as intended. Once the model is aligned precisely with the moon, it may then be used to start the Lunar Dream apparatus safely, Josie. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Bullard's research is crucial to this story. I wonder if I can get this thing working. Yeah, likewise. Mm, okay. I will update that after the stream. I'm sorry about that. Thought I had a permanent link on it. I think, or maybe, maybe there's a, there's a link in, let's see, the one that I have linked, I think works. One of them is expired. I just keep forgetting to, to remove it. Um, I'm sorry. I'm like not versed in this stuff. I'm not sure if I know how. I linked it to my about, I think. One of them is expired and one of them is not. I'm sorry. But thank you. Um, okay. 
So calibrate the device. I think this is talking about this. Yeah, this big ass thing in the middle here. It's just a normal scale. This is going to be something else for ourselves. Margaret Higgins is my hero. She won a Pulitzer for her reporting in Korea. I went to college because of her. She goes to war zones, marches with the troops. Nothing scares her, and she gets the story. Marguerite Higgins doesn't run from a juicy story just because her life is in danger. Neither will I. Well, that certainly explains why she's staying after what happened. I wouldn't, but okay. Uh, dear Harris, so it's Harris, uh... Bullard, is his first name, is Harris. Um, I read in the paper today that you received a special award from the college for groundbreaking research. I am writing to wish you my sincere congratulations. I've said some things that I regret, but today I wish only to extend good wishes to you and to your future endeavors. Do you know the scene in North by Northwest when Cary Grant disrupts an art auction? He makes nonsensical bids until the police are called to haul him away. I saw it last summer at the cinema and we used to drive the I'm sorry, saw it last summer at the cinema we used to drive to in Logan. I was lonely to go it was lonely to go alone, but that scene made me smile. My life feels like that sometimes. I poke my head up and say something crazy every now and then, just on the off chance that somebody will take me away from all of this. I'm no Cary Grant. I'm afraid. I would like to hear from you. Please write me back. Sincerely, Cynthia. That's interesting. Is she Mrs. Bullard? Very interesting. There's another note under here. Strange device with bells at the top. There's spots for small batteries. But I want to see the note. Why can't I grab this? There's clearly a note under there. I have to walk over here and then walk over, I guess. Now I can walk through it and get the note. It's kind of weird, but okay. Uh, H. Bullard, Daily Log, June 11th, 1965. So we're kind of getting close here. To the date. Uh, using the moon as a trigger for the lunar drain apparatus has its problems. The moon must be full or nearly so, the night must be clear, and the process must be started at a very specific time to ensure that the moon is visible from inside the chamber. Josie's been following weather reports and using lunar charts to, pr to try to predict days for ideal test conditions, but it's an error-prone process. The data we get back from the weather service just isn't precise enough. Today, I hit upon the solution. We'll build our own weather device. In fact, we can base it upon an exceedingly accurate design from a century ago, ago, the Tempest Prognosticator. I'll have to make some modifications for our purposes, of course. I'm sure that we, with some tuning, we can build a device that responds exactly to our weather needs. Then we'll need to get some leeches. Build a strange device to track the phases of the moon. That's what that is. Okay, that works. Thank you. Thank you. The door is stuck. There are electronics inside, and it looks like a battery. I'll probably have to find one, at least. But let's uh, mark the other room and just see. Now we're on the other side of the piano, eh? And I just, I don't know, I'm just certain that I'm not going to see this person here. Kind of weird. It's been used recently in the summer. A fireplace broom. For some reason. I'm terrified that that person is just going to show up. Uh, the Crystal Cave by Bobby Sawyer. This is chapter 8 now. The passage continued downward, a steep slope like we were going down a hill. The smooth crystal didn't give our feet purchase, and we were trying our best to not, uh, not to slip. 
It was dark as night, but the light from our helmets reflected strangely from the walls, making them dance blue. Once or twice, I thought I saw a flicker in the glass, but it was just a trick of the light. It was cold down there. None of us was wearing a jacket. Um, it dawned on us that we had come totally unprepared. A few hours before, we had been whooping and shouting, excited by the crazy angles that cut the crystal entrance out of the cave wall, sure that we'd found something that was going to make us rich. Now we walked in silence. Henderson's face wore a hard, determined look. Johnson's was all suspicion. Jimmy just looked scared, his skin pale and his eyes wide. I opened my mouth to say something to him, then shut it. Either we'd find a way out, or we'd die down here. All there was to it. It was then that Johnson screamed. Okay, uh, not that this is something that I particularly want to do, but I feel like I have to do it. Yep, there it is. Okay. There's something down there. Some loose floorboards. Right. <laughs> it's for not anything that I can use. This. Fireplace poker. It's not a crowbar, but it might help. Not, er... Hidden space under the floorboards. It's a code. Weird combination. Some sort of lockbox, and there's a combination lock on it. Yeah, I don't know what that would be. So, oh, another handprint. It'll be more about us. Dad took me to Wichita once before he died. We drove for four hours to get there ate hamburgers, and watched a movie. Then we went home. He never explained, just told me to get in the car. I guess he knew he was going to die. Hmm. <laughs> That's sad. H. Bullard, Daily Log. This is 1962. Cynthia called me today. She sounded drunk. Sometimes I think she just calls uh, to get a rise out of me. I maintained my calm this time, declined her invitation to meet, and told her in no uncertain terms that if she was looking for money, she had best looks elsewhere. And now I am going to get drunk myself. Graham came by my office this morning. He had a strange-looking envelope. It was addressed to me, but had been pushed under his door. I bore no return address, just the single word, woodcutter. I had to run to class and haven't had a chance to open it yet, but something about it makes me uncomfortable. I hope it's not another love letter from a student. Interesting. Uh, Graham is a weasel. He's never stepped foot in the lab or run an experiment, but he makes it sound like he's the brains behind the whole program. Without me, he'd be a washed-up theorist with nothing to his name. Wants nothing to do with Cyn Cynthia and thinks little of Wellington. Certainly sounds that way. This is really the middle of nowhere, even for the yeah, same stuff. What we got here National Recognition for Local College. Uh, this is July 2nd, 1965, also. Wait, check it. <sighs> okay. Apologies. Washington, D.C. The National Academy of Sciences announced its annual picks for leaders in science academia on Wednesday. Among the recipients of this prestigious award was our own Oakley College in Logan. The college won recognition for a controversial research, research paper published by the school's small neuroscience department last year. We are very proud to have our work recognized in this way, said Dr. Graham Wellington, chair of Oakley's Brain Studies program. We are a very small program focused on areas of research that the big schools ignore. We applaud the Academy of Science for giving us the chance to prove ourselves. The award-winning paper authored by Wellington and Dr. Harris Bullard was written in 1962 but only published last year. Titled, Accessing Subconscious Waves Through Twisted Pair Electroencephalography. 
The highly technical paper caused some controversy controversy in the neuroscience community and was ridiculed by many experts in the field. The paper was the source of some lo uh, local tumult, tum tumult, tumult, I don't know, never seen that word in my life, as well. Uh, this paper was written entirely by Dr. Bullard, said one Oakley student who did not wish to give his name. Wellington just put his name on it and took all the credit. Bullard, who retired from the school last year, could not be reached for comment. Graham Wellington claimed credit for a research paper that Bullard wrote. Very interesting. Sheet music is scattered all over the floor. Was Bullard a musician? I didn't know that. Um. Okay, I mean, I don't know. Uh, what, uh, what to do? Um, one thing I thought about trying is maybe sweeping this stuff. Yeah. Find some. It's a series of faint symbols. Star, circle, square. That will help. Old metal key. Bill. Uh, Bill. Bill. Who's Bill? Do we know Bill yet? I don't know if we know Bill yet. Um, I owe you many thanks for forwarding my request to the New York Times. I think we have the opportunity to tell one of the great science stories of the 20th century and make a considerable sum in the process. The Times is a great first step, but when we're finished, I want to have headlines written about me on the front page of every paper in the country. Jeez. The key to our success is Harris Bullard's brain research. He has discovered something fundamental about the operation of subconscious brain waves, and I believe that he will soon harness the knowledge to build a device whose object is to make men superhuman. Men, specifically? Is this guy just like a just a jerk or what i think this is probably wellington that's probably writing this uh our first task is to procure this device before bullard can publicize it and my plans for accomplishing that are already in motion once the device is in my hands i am confident that i can reproduce and improve upon his work that mr mitchell is where you come in an invention of this magnitude must not be consigned to the boneyard of the academic journal journal it deserves praise and recognition from the common man we will make it the story of the year, and then we will sell the technology to those rich enough to meet our price. For now, we wait for Bullard to finish the device, then we will make our move. I look forward to your continued cooperation in this mutually beneficial partnership. Best regards, Graham Wellington. Yeah, so this guy's... Not good. Yeah, I found the safe combination. Okay, um, and I also found a key. I don't really remember what the key would be used for. Like, is there a key that I should use? Or... You calibrate the device. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I just... Oh, I thought this would be outside. We're in the kitchen now. Pots and pans, not packed very well. Um, I have to do this. Stove top works, that might come into play. United States Patent Office 
patent to January 3rd of 63. Uh, some code. Eyewear with electromagnetic refracting lenses. Harris Bullard, Oakley College, Logan, Kansas City. Filed November 7th, 1959. Serial number, the four claims. Yeah. Oh, boy. Very sexy. Huh. Okay. Abstract of the disclosure. A pair of goggles is provided, which includes a metal strip, a battery, and lenses, an assembly which, when placed over the eye so that it rests against the head, permits the metal strip to touch the skin just above the left ear and crossing the forehead to touch the skin right above the right ear as well. The function of the metal strip is to detect upon contact electromagnetic impulses from the brain and to transmit them to the lenses. The lenses are created from a glass material that stuff that is made to alter its reflection refraction of light based on electromagnetic impulses received from the metal strip and amplified by the battery this invention relates to the visualization of electromagnetic activity in the brain and more particularly the creation of visual patterns based on neural activity of the subconscious so we got a patent for it a few years before it looks like coffee can that's frozen shut i can hear something rattling around inside well, why don't i shut these so that house doesn't get crazy crazy cold or something and we saw that the stove is working so let's try this maybe i can put it on the pot no Wait, was the stove top? I don't get it. Um, it probably works. I got that part. Can you, like, do that for me? Or... Maybe there's a microwave in here. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. I'll come over here. Harris Bullard, I am Woodcutter. You have five days, I am coming. Unnecessary last list sentence, but. Whoever floats your boat. Okay, let's. I don't know if I. Can I, like, run it underwater maybe first before. Is it well outside? Sure. Another note. Uh, Bobby. Bobby. God. Bobby, uh, something, he's the, he's the, the errand runner that does, uh, fiction writing, right? I forget his last name. Uh, here's the list of supplies this week. I know you're angry that I haven't paid in a month, but please wait a little bit longer. I have some money coming and I'll be able to pay you soon. Beans, cigarettes, tonic water, white bread, butter, eggs, copper wire, three feet, a solder spool, solder spool, Vinyl tape, gasoline, butane, leeches, as many as you can get alive. Bullet out of money. So, plenty of motives all around, it looks like here. Some stronger than others. Harris Bullard, I am woodcutter. You will complete your research and then hand it to me. Or we can discuss the South Pacific in 1944. He was on a ship. I don't know what, what happened. <laughs> dishes yeah um i am not thrilled about being in this house and i don't what hmm Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Jeez. Whoa. Okay. Uh, cold winter increases risk of exposure. Kansas City, Kansas. 
With temperatures below 20 for most of the state, experts warn that deaths from hypothermia are on the rise. Several deaths have already been attributed to the cold this year, including two hikers found south of Ottawa and a man in Wichita. Um, am I saying that right? Wichita? Might be Wichita. I don't know. I'm going to keep saying Wichita. Um, December is one of the deadliest months, said Charles Manning, chief medical examiner at Ottawa... Um, police department. People, blah, 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 people. people don't realize how cold it's gotten and go out unprepared. Profound hypothermia occurs when a person's core body temperature drops below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. However, scientists do not understand why the deep cold kills some people and spares others. According to Manning, men are at greater risk than women and the cold is particularly dangerous for thin people. Uh, identifying death by hypothermia can be a challenge, said Manning. If the victim is found in the snow with his clothes half off, then we know. But sometimes bodies aren't recovered until much later, often without a mark on them. Scientists do not understand why some victims of hypothermia remove their clothing, a phenomenon called paradoxical undressing, while others do not. Uh, last March, the body of a 30-year-old woman who had been missing for several days was found near Topeka. After falling, I'm sorry, failing to identify the cause of death, the coroner chalked it up to exposure to the elements. The easiest way to stay safe is to not go out in the cold, alone in the cold, especially at night, said Manning. If you must go out, make sure that other people know where you're headed and dress warmly. If you're in a car accident, stay in the car. Don't try to hoof it to the next town on your own. I've heard about the paradox paradoxical undressing thing. Definitely interesting. Oh, hello. Wow. Crystal Cave by uh, Sawyer's his last name, Bobby Sawyer, chapter 14. We rounded the corner and Johnson stopped dead like he'd be given an electric shock. I about ran into him, cursing before I heard it. From somewhere far ahead, deep in the darkness, somebody was singing, a woman's voice. It echoed off the crystal walls and then seemed everywhere at once. This <laughs> Ugh. The song was so faint, I listened hard, but couldn't make out the words. The melody was odd, ghost-like, but it was definitely a person singing. Johnson turned and looked at me, but didn't say anything. We both understood. Somebody was down there. Somebody who must know the way out. We were saved. Okay, I see. I... I don't know why I thought this, but when the first sentence uh, that we rounded the corner and Johnson stopped dead, like he'd been giving an electric shock, I literally just thought he died, but yeah, so he just stopped dead, like stopped as if he were dead. Okay, we broke into a run then, uh, Johnson cradling his arm as we tried to cross the forest of the crystal, scrambling over translucent, translucent beams of amethyst big as fallen redwoods. I slipped, hit the smooth surface hard, got up again. We followed the woman's voice deeper and deeper into the cave. Jimmy got to the plateau first. I could tell before I made the rise that something was wrong. In the middle of the mesa was a sort of hatch, like something off the deck of a submarine. It was round and made of steel, and sticking out of it was a metal locking wheel. The woman's song drifted up from it like smoke. I looked back at Johnson as I grasped the handle. He was out of breath, still clutching his wrist where his hand had been, trying to keep the cloth tourniquet tight around the stump. He nodded, and I gave it a turn. Tub is full of leeches. This is disgusting. Well, those are necessary for whatever. Also, here we go. Shower is my guess. Yo! Yeah, that's gross. Okay. Well, yep. Wait, did I open this? Letter A, put it on the letter. Sh sure. It's a lot newer than the house itself. Not sure what that has to do with. What the heck, dude? Okay. The flashlight doesn't have any batteries. I could go get some. Potentially. This is real. I could die here. It's a test. I can do this. I can do this. Love the confidence. Oh, more newspaper. The Week in Review. Johnson City. Texas 
Uh, Johnson said he texted us. Okay. President Johnson boned up on reports and correspondence at the LBJ Ranch today pending... LeBron James Ranch. That's not funny. Uh, today, a pending arrival of cabinet officials for a wide-ranging review of defense and foreign problems. Defense Secretary Robert S. Uh, McNamara, McNamara and Deputy Defense Secretary Cyrus R. Vance were due to arrive by Jetstar at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time and will remain overnight at the ranch. Saigon, South Vietnam, hopefully I'm saying that right. The Viet Cong mounted an assault on the Bien Hoya, I don't know, airport in Saigon on November 1st. Washington has yet to comment on the impact of the attack on U.S. operations in Vietnam. Uh, Neshoba County, MS. Um, was that is that Massachusetts or? I'm literally so dumb. This game is making me feel so stupid. Uh, 18 men arrested by the FBI in connection with the murder of three civil rights workers are still awaiting formal charges from the state. The men, alleged to be members of the Ku Klux Klan, are accused of murdering James Cheney. When was this? 1964? Holy. Ku Klux Klan. Wait. 18 men arrested. Jesus. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, accused of murdering James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner with the... Ta tacit cooperation uh, of the local police. The three activists were visiting the area to investigate the burning of a church. And then entertainment. Uh, the Supreme's Bobby... God, I can't read anymore. The Supreme's Baby Love remains at the top of the charts this week, followed closely by Oh Pretty Woman by Roy Orbison. Uh, at the movies, the outrage opened this week. Paul Newman... Uh, Lawrence Harvey and Claire Bloom star. Hmm. Oh, another personal thing. If Woodcutter killed Bullard, he was pretty sneaky about it. No marks on the body, no sign of a struggle. Coroner ruled it was pancreatic failure. How do you kill a man without leaving a mark on him? And why return to the scene of the crime? True. Nothing really up there. Uh, okay. Well, I could go... I forget which way I came. Oh, this is the crime scene. Well, shouldn't I go into that other room? I haven't been in there before. Because I went left when I could have gone right, eh? Alright, this will lead outside. Something's fine. Okay, that's actually fine. It's actually fine by me. I have the dob. I have the bed day. Knob. I have the combination to the safe. I have a frozen coffee can. Got some bottles. Got a flashlight with no batteries. Got the mask. So I got a few things. Um, I don't know. I figured the stove, like I could use it for. Um, for the frozen coffee. But... I haven't had my coffee. Um, sure. So, hopefully, because the person was in this, like, part of... Okay. I, like, don't like this very much. Okay, it's because last time they followed me here. Just saying. And also... They're in the corner, I think. Weird. Okay. Anyway. Uh, door... Or not the doorknob. I keep saying that. It's not... Not a doorknob. 
letter E printed on it. Okay. But they're all empty. I don't really know what that means. Uh, what else? I have the key to the, or the combo to the safe. So, probably good for that. Let's look at the objectives. I already did one of them. Who's woodcutter? Open the safe upstairs. Calibrate, calibrate the device. Well, I know I can do one of those things. Uh, this is the last place that I saw that person. And I'd like to not run into them again, preferably. Go upstairs. That's so funny. It was like flashing red and was like, run. <laughs> to, oh. That was not there before. Okay, well, this is the room that they chased me out of. Sure hope they're waiting for me. I know bro's right here up on the... Oh, that wasn't there before either. Was it? Wait, I've seen this before. Pretty sure this wasn't here the first time I came in. Somebody must have put it here. Wood cutter? No, it's just a toy, but something about it really bothers me. It's a monkey toy. It's probably giving me nightmares. Yeah... If I walk up here, I keep thinking, someone's going to follow me. All right. It is, brother. Uh, 20, 50, 10. Yeah, wait, hold on, I did it wrong. L20. Is that 20? Okay, that's terrible. The animation, like, did not line up at all. But okay. Lots and lots of letters. The Lunar Dream Apparatus. Altering the brain to achieve permanent ideal focus by H. Bullard and J. Herrera. Abstract. William Benjamin Carpenter's work describing the Carpenter effect over a century ago continues to baffle psychologists today. We have struggled to understand the linkage between the conscious and the subconscious, particularly the ways in which the subconscious mind seems to wield special knowledge of which the conscious mind is unaware. Our research attempts to give the conscious mind unfiltered access to all the information stored in the subconscious by creating an artificial bridge between the two. We have done this in a rudimentary way with a set of lenses that refract light by tracking alterations in brain waves, but a more robust connection requires permanent alteration of the brain. The Lunar Dream apparatus combines engineering, psychology, neuroscience, and a bit of physics to create just such a connection. In order to give the subject some control over their own subconscious, we have chosen the moon as a mental mnemonic. Uh, after undergoing treatment in the lunar dream apparatus, the subject's conscious and subconscious are merged whenever a full moon is visible. Okay, that's probably of note. Uh, this paper describes the construction of the apparatus, its function, the details of our research, and data recorded from our first test subject, co-author Josephine Herrera. This must be what Woodcutter was after, the Lunar Dream Apparatus. Uh, Martin Bros Construction, receipt for services rendered the date of June 16th, 1964. Total parts, uh, total build, 1389, paid in full, sure. Notes, installed steel uh, siding and insulation per specification, ran electrical for fans and evaporator under floor to connect to main line and basement. Oh shit, is that where I was? Was I in, like, a basement or something? Uh, compressor, evaporator, Freon tank, and ventilation installed and tested. Replace standard door handle with locking variety per customer request. Hmm. Why lock a receipt like this away? Joe, this is the only remaining copy of our research materials. I destroyed the rest. Take this and get out of here. After I'm gone, they'll turn this house upside down looking for answers. Josie... 
I know about the secret room behind your wardrobe. If you've stashed anything there, you must get rid of it. I've already cleaned out the freezer. I'm counting on you. Take the files, destroy the machine, and get out of here. Harris. Secret room, and what did Bullard have hidden in the freezer? Search the basement freezer and explore Josie's secret room. Of course. Of course, of course. A bottle, the letter C is printed on the label. Well, there's that. So what I have A, C, D, and E. There's no. There's no B. Okay, I don't really know like what that means, but it's fine. All right, just close up everything, I suppose. Um, I don't want to do what it's wanting me to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, let's go just across the hall. I don't know really where the basement is. TBH. Uh, but if I see this person here. If I don't yet. Knock on wood. Okay. Here we are. Not much of interest. Is that so? Josie, what were you up to? Girly girl. What? Oh, I can't see anything. Do I need the flashlight to be in here? Um, I don't know if I need the flashlight, so I'll just keep going. That was awful. Dear Diary, I was thinking about Dad today. That scared me. <laughs> I finally got uh, some confirmation from the insurance company, which fills in some blanks. Here's what I know so far. Dad went to war in 1940 to the Philippines. He had some minor injury and was discharged in 1944. He was the only member of his unit to survive, the rest having died in a submarine. In 1946, his parents' home in Illinois burned down and he turned up to collect the insurance payout. At least somebody did. He didn't have any other family, so it must have uh, so it must have been him. But after that, I can't find any trace of him. Then in 1952, the name Harris Bullard turns up on the footnotes of a research paper from Oakley College. Is this dad? If so, what was he doing in the years after the war? Maybe he went abroad. There are some inconsistencies. Dad studied physics, not neuroscience, and Dr. Harris Bullard of Oakley College seems to have a chemistry background. Uh, there couldn't have been two Harris Bullards at the UFC in the 1930s, could there? The scariest thing for me is that Dr. Bullard looks nothing like the one photo I have of my father. In the photo, his face looks different and he's not so tall and skinny. Of course, he would have been younger as the photo was taken before I was born, but maybe it's not Dad in the photo at all. I've changed my major to neuroscience and have moved out here with one purpose, to figure out if Dr. Harris Bullard of Gove, Kansas, is the man who promised to marry Mama in 1939. It's been two years and I'm still not sure. I don't have the guts to ask him. What if I'm wrong? What will that make me? Harris Bullard is her father? But he looks different. I'd just like to say, if I get cornered by that person or thing or whatever, I'm just absolutely screwed. There's no way. Dear Diary, 
Got a letter from the Herreras today. They are good parents, even if they aren't my real parents. Oh. Yeah, didn't think about that. Uh, they sent the letter to me at Dr. Bullard's address, which means they know I'm living here. I wonder if they're worried. The whole town seems to have decided that the only reason I'd stay here is that I'm sleeping with him. I don't care what the small-minded bumpkins around here think, uh, but I hope that the Herreras aren't worried. Maybe uh, soon I can tell them what I'm really up to. Also, Bobby Sawyer gave me another draft of his novel. It's really weird, but I think it's pretty good. I've been typing up his manuscripts on Dr. Bullard's typewriter. I'm fixing mistakes and making little edits as I go. When he's done, he's going to submit the typed version to Amazing Stories or Worlds of Tomorrow. I hope they publish it. Uh, I don't know if magazines will even look at work by a black author. I told him to use a pen name. Tomorrow, we run the first live test of the Lunar Dream apparatus. Dr. Bullard doesn't think it's going to work the first time. Uh, I hope it does. I volunteered to be the first test subject. Maybe after the treatment, I'll be able to understand what happened at Dad. Hmm. This is as far as I can go. I don't like that. Okay. Uh, that's worse. That's worse. Oh, that's worse. Okay. Oh, God. What's happening? I don't know. I mean, this is not even where the entrance is, so. Uh... I'm about to look to the side. Okay. So here's the thing is that I didn't actually get full credit for doing that. And I think probably the reason is that I don't have a battery in this flashlight. And uh I'm not sure uh what to make of that but I will uh, maybe try to go pull the battery out of the thingy. It's not down there. Um, yeah, that's the only way I can really get there. I can also go outside. But I'm not trying to go up there. I'm trying to go, like, to the bait. Whatever. Alright, go back to the crime scene. Rather, I'll go through the crime scene, I think. There's nothing I can do to take that thing out of the... Yeah, no, I don't think so. Oh, is that what? Okay. Sure. That's not worth. That's disgusting. I feel like I'm practicing good situational awareness every time I turn into a room. Wait a minute. Did I come from there or did I come from here? 
Have I been in here? Is a question. Okay, so it's not outside, it's just in there. Got it. But I still need the light for Josie's room, I think. Probably. Most probably. Uh, well, I don't know what kind of order you're wanting, but can I, can I steal? No, no, whatever. All right, let's get these out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the right order is. Oh, oh, hold on. Uh, I remember something vaguely. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, lens? I don't think so. Definitely not that one. No. Um. Joe's Diary, The Crystal Cave. Daily logs, maybe. No. I don't think so. Misc, maybe. Research docs. Let's try this one. Lens. Maybe I can see this. Bottle weights. Here we go. Uh, the bottles must be placed from heaviest to lightest to produce accurate results. The actual weight depends on the leech used, so I have to recalibrate every time I want to take a reading. Also note that the recalibration is required if the battery in the base dies. However, the device works as intended. Once the model is aligned precisely with the moon... Okay. Let's weigh him. Let's weigh him. Can I... Yeah, that's what I'm attempting to do, so. Right, see that much. A, B's already in there, so let's just do A and C. C's heavier than A. Is it heavier than D? Yes. Is it heavier than E? Barely. So C is the heaviest. C is the heaviest. Uh, A and E. E is heavier. E is heavier again. E. D and A. A is heavier. There we go. Put him in. I did the trick. The moon moved into position. Lunar Dream Apparatus Calibrator. Okay. It's a battery. I need two. Well, can't I put the battery in the flashlight? I need two batteries. What? Did, what? Um. What? Uh. How do I put these together? Didn't show me that. I'm not allowed to put these in. I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. Why can I cannot combine these? Uh, okay.
Um, I don't know what to, I mean, I have, you know, one battery. I found something secret in here. Maybe there's something secret somewhere else that I haven't looked at. I'll give this one more shot, but probably, you know. He's gone, by the way. I don't think I've done this in like every single room. Let's try it in here. We walk over here and then try it. Leave. Well, that's mean. Something secret. Can't, can't really find anything. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I I don't know what to do. I found anything secret in here, did I? Oh, yeah, there, I mean, there's lights in there, but I think they have batteries. Right? I mean, there's no way. Oh, now I turn the burner on. I see that. Can't touch any of these except for this one. Is there something that I can get from one of these places? Oh wait, well hold on, hold on. Okay, now I haven't tried this. No. Okay, I mean I don't know. I I know like generally what I'm trying to do. But I just, I don't know. I can't just have like a cup or something like Can I just have one thing? Dude, I...
there has to be something in here. What's it? Oh. Uh, I haven't seen this, I guess. Um, Um, dear Harris, uh, Happy New Year. I suppose I am wasting my time by writing you again. Um, sorry, one second. Um, I was very upset when you did not respond to my last letter. I was told that you refused my calls at the college. I understand that you are still angry. And for that, I cannot fault you. But unlike you, I have gotten past our little meltdown. I have grown to see it as the inevitable terminus of our relationship, something that had to happen sooner or later. Like spilt milk, as they say, it's not worth crying over. But I do have a request. I will make it plain, Harris. I need money. Some of my investments went bad last year, and with Kennedy in the White House soon, the others will certainly fall, fail. You may hate me now, but I cannot believe you will consign me to a life of poverty. Somewhere deep down inside you, under that mask you wear in your daily life, I know you must feel something for me. Please say you'll help me just this once. Put down the mask and trust your feelings. Humbly and sincerely, Cynthia. She wanted money. Gambling debt. Get a job. This is crazy that there's nothing to put this stupid coffee in. Um, okay. Oh, I can turn this on, can I? First thing that I see. It's crazy. The ice on the coffee can lid melted. What's inside? Battery, hopefully. Looks like a blank sheet of paper is something special about it. Um, 
Can I turn this off, please? It's the only thing I haven't used in this stupid place, so. burn something into it dear Josie thank you for the lemon juice this is my first time writing a secret message and I hope that it works lemon juice huh I didn't know that uh, today I bought brought Bullard his weekly groceries and again he refused to pay it's been over a month he claims that he's broke but I don't believe him my family has bills to pay too and you know he'd never send a white boy away without payment I can't stand this. My ma listens to Dr. King on the radio nearly every week, and she says we've got to be vigilant but peaceful. But I'm tired of being peaceful. If somebody doesn't pay you for your work, I think you should take action. Next time I come around, Bullard's going to pay his tab, or we're going to have some words. Maybe more than words. Don't worry about me, though. I'll come prepared. Bobby. So, yeah, he was, he was planning to... Uh, do some do something about it which uh, I mean he's not getting paid so he should probably be paid for it shouldn't he Um, sorry. Um, well, I can't. What? Nope. Don't care. I cannot go into. Um, into exploring the basement if I don't have any light and the only thing that I can do that I haven't done I think on the objectives is explore Josie's secret room even though I did do it I just feel like maybe I missed something I don't know what the deal is I hope that I don't have to go back into the other room I thought I needed the flashlight to go into her secret room anyway. I am interested to figure out what actually happens here. I hope that these motives, these other motives, don't just like absolutely fizzle out. Because there's a lot going on right now. And I don't want it to be just like one person does it and the others are just like nothing happens like something you know what I mean just like everybody has their quarrels with mr. Uh, Bullard dr. Bullard okay see what is this that was not there Okay, all right, no, okay, that's it, really. So I'm gonna turn around, 
and I'm gonna use the flashlight and something's gonna happen. But first I'm gonna I'm gonna do this again, just see what's up. Monkey's not there. Okay. Is it not gonna let me even use the flashlight, I guess? I don't know how to use it. Something's gonna happen though. The audio is always scarier than the visual, in my opinion. They definitely combine to make a jump scare or what have you. But the audio makes it way worse. If you've ever watched a scary movie, just like low volume or like you can't hear it or something like that, it's not even half as scary. still be scary but you don't know what the hell's going on on top of <laughs> on top of the jump scares not getting you you don't know what the hell's going on because you can't hear anything so. okay i'm going into the basement ideally and that's this way it's definitely a workaround but we've gotten to know the house by now two hours in i think we're making decent pace hopefully starting to figure some stuff out here I usually don't play many point and clicks, but this one has been pretty. Oh god, that scared me. Pretty smooth and uh. What? The... Ah! You want me to go into the basement? Walk. Stuck down here for now. I better. I hate this person. Yeah, can you just let me? So I locked it, I guess. Sorry, I thought the jump scared. Scaring me. Light switch is where. Let me find the light switch, bro. Like, okay, that's not a light switch. Oh, here? Okay. Um. Okay. Sorry. I probably screamed like so loud when that happened. And yeah. All right. More stuff about ourselves. I haven't had a good night's sleep in three days. I've been giddy ever since I figured that this might be a murder case. Not even a broken arm could keep me down. But now that I'm here, the truth seems a lot more complicated. This story is my shot. Better make it count. Sure. What is it doing? Hot water heater seems to be in good shape. Good. That's good. Okay, walk over here. Uh, go over here. Okay, I don't know what that was, but we're going to read. Spring cleaning with chemistry. Spring is here, and you know what that means. Hours of household chores while the men kick back and enjoy the sunshine. Okay. Uh, but don't let spring cl cleaning get you down. I forget that this is, like, so 19-whatever. Um, let Mother Nature do the work for you. That's right, ladies. I'm talking about chemistry. With careful application of just a few household chemicals, your work will be done in no time. This handy guide covers a few of the most... Uh, useful concoctions that you can make at home have mold in the bathroom copper sulfate mixed with calcium oxide makes a great fungicide tired of trying to loosen a rusty screw just add borax to lemon juice to create a powerful rust remover does your man complain about your tap water you can soften it by adding sodium carbonate 
don't waste time cleaning the hard way. A simple set of common chemicals can help you get that work done faster and smarter. Okay. Cleaning supplies, detergent, bleach, clean towels. Toolbox, it's empty. Set of chemicals and none of them are labeled. Lovely. This junk isn't going to help me get out of here. When my dad was alive, our basement looked like this. Is that so? H. Bullard Daily Log. June 12, 1964. Uh, today I turned in my resignation at the college. I have arranged for my lab to be moved to my house, and I am having the icebox installed next Tuesday. I've taken steps to ensure secrecy. Um... Woodcutter may have forced me out of the school, but now the research can continue without his knowledge. I'm lucky that the house has such an interesting history. Josie came to my office as I was packing up. She was distraught, her eyeshadow all smeared. I've never seen a student so emotionally affected. She has been a valuable assistant this year, and the re What? Excuse me, I wasn't finished. It was a daily log, wasn't it? And the research will be harder without her. It occurred to me to invite her to work with me at my home, but I hardly think she would have accepted. The young woman now holds a graduate degree in an esoteric neuroscience at the age of 23. What does she need an old man like me for? Okay. Sure. Oh. Ha ha ha. You know what? I haven't checked, and I'm almost certain... There will be something on this chair. No? Oh, there he is. Okay. Oh, multiple... Multiple QNs. So, we'll come here. One of the boards here is loose. There's a slot. Looks like something's supposed to fit here. Uh, okay, that's that. Well, I can come up here. Try to, okay, that's not... I wanted to go farther than that. Thank you. Auric acid. Oh, there's a record. 78 for the record player. Forgot about that. Oh, secret panel. This crank looks like it's made to be detached. Better take it with me. I don't know if I want to open that yet. What what's what do we got going on over here? Identifying chemical compounds by their flame. In an emergency, you may need to identify a foreign substance. Many chemicals can be isolated by observing the color of the flame that they produce when they burn. The example below uh, lists the chart below lists several examples. Okay. Uh, sure. Just a Bunsen burner turn this on. I mean, maybe if I just identify them, it'll just stay identified like it was in the thing. I don't want to fix anything. I'm going to turn this on. Should have a flame in a second here. If I need to light it. Uh, I don't have a lighter, I don't think. Um, okay, I'll turn it off for now. Oh, is this the secret freezer or whatever? Yep. Okay, there's still stuff to be to be seen. Uh, September 14th, 1964. Are you enjoying yourself, Harris? Does it excite you to shun me, to treat me like garbage the way that you do? When you sit in bed with that little slut, do you smoke cigarettes and laugh about me? I know all about you, Harris. I know about the girl who's living at your house. You're old enough to be her grandfather, for Christ's sakes. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm ashamed of you. The whole town is ashamed of you. You are a laughingstock, Harris. A public spectacle. Now you have that Sawyer kid running your errands for you. You don't even have the guts to show your face around town. Really, Harris? I thought that you were more of a man than that. You cheat on me, bankrupt me, and deny me help in my hour of need, and still you are not content? Now you insist on tarnishing my reputation with your... Let... 
lecherous antics? I f Do you think of no one but yourself? Can you really be the man I knew? My man in Louisville refused my bet this year, Harris. If I can't play the races, I don't know how I will survive. Your little vendetta will be the death of me. Do you understand? When they find me lying in the street, starved and thin and dead from exposure, the blame will be squarely upon your head, Cynthia. I don't know about that one, Chica. I definitely think... Well, first off, we know, obviously, he's not cheating on her because Josie thinks that he might be her dad. So she's participating in his research. So we know that. But I could understand where she's concerned about it. But she has a gambling addiction and is saying that it's going to be Harris's fault for not giving her money that she's going to die. That doesn't make any sense. That is hilariously obscure. Bunch of old paint. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's anything here that's... Bottle of lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. I mean, um, there's a lot. What did I say? A lock? Uh... Do I have a key? I don't think so. But I have lemon juice. I have, um... What's the... Uh... It was a newspaper, is what it was. Um... This one... Tired of trying to loosen a rusty screw, just add borax to lemon juice. See, well, but I need a lighter to do that. I don't have a lighter. But I'm stuck down here, so. Um, there's gotta be something. Hello? Not doing it. Um, what do you want me to do with this, brother? Nothing. I don't like what would go in there. Nothing. The only thing I can think of is the crank. So I don't know what this is going to lead to. I hope it's not outside. I don't want to see that person again, even though I know I will. But it's the only thing I can think of. So it'll probably release something from here. I don't know if it'll be good or not. Might be outside. <sighs> Dude, I don't have a lighter. Um, okay. I don't know. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to use the restroom really quick. We'll be right back. Momentarily.
Okay. The way of like five seconds at least. Okay. Um. Well, I can't get out of here. Uh, what? When? 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 Do these things only show up, like, when I do stuff like that? Because I walked back here, and I walked back here, and this matches. Yep. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, what is this? Graham, for the last year and a half, I've been receiving threatening notes from somebody calling himself Woodcutter. He knows things about my past that I'd rather not have aired in public. After forcing me into early retirement, he now demands that I hand over all of my work. Last night, I was supposed to deliver my research materials to him. Instead, uh, I camped out nearby and watched the meeting points through my camera with a big lens. I can't say I was entirely surprised to see you show up. Some advice. Next time you try to extort personal property from somebody, don't arrange a meeting under a bright street lamp. I bet the photos will turn out great. You can make up names, try to spook me in my home, and threaten me all you want, but I'm not giving you my research, Graham. If you want it, you'll have to kill me. A word of warning, I won't go easy. I once broke a man's wrist with a ball-peen hammer, and I rather enjoyed doing it. I look forward to repeating that experiment with you. Harris. It's actually Graham Wellington. Blackmailing Bullard as woodcutter. Refused to give in to Wellington's demands. Yeah, I hate that guy, so... I'm vibing with the... Uh, what's his name? You know, Harris. Graham is a thief and a liar, and nobody likes him. Okay, uh, let's turn on the gas. Light it up. Um, okay, so I just put the chemicals in. Unknown chemical. Sodium carbonate, lithium chloride, copper sulfate, sodium borate, copper chloride. Okay, let's leave it on, doesn't matter. Uh, I need, I think it's lemon juice and borax. So they're all gone then. Yeah, that was just a <laughs> a ruse. Uh, I'm gonna turn this off actually. Gas shuts off and everything shuts off. All right, let's make it not rusty. Rust remover. Here we go. Hmm. What in the world? Okay. Okay. Cynthia Peckman wanted money. Sounds like she's deeply in debt. She inherited Bullard's entire estate. Could she have done it? Maybe. Graham Wellington has a secret. He's woodcutter. He's been trying to steal Bullard's research for himself, and he must have murdered Bullard. He was being blackmailed about... Uh... James Lowry, I think, because the 1944, yeah. Who is James Lowry, and why did Bullard want to keep his existence a secret? There's more to this story. 
All right, here we go. Not super thrilled about this, but onward and upwards, I suppose. I mean, what do you want me to do here? Just keep going. So I hear noises for sure. What the? Are there passageways down there? Wonder what's at the bottom of the well. Okay. Well, I don't want to. Okay. Just let me. Can I grab this? No, whatever. Where am I going, dude? Uh, I don't want to run into what I think is Wellington anymore. Shed, boric acid. What is this? Well, first off, there he is. Always somewhere. Canisters of some kind are connected to the pod. A blank page. Um, I'll have to burn it, I think. That's what happened last time. There was nothing spe Okay, I saw the guy up here, right? But is there anything blinking at me? Like, special? Nope. Alright. Is this the apparatus? Yes. panel. I need to turn it on. The note. Log. Uh, the main pod of the apparatus is complete. Today I tested each of the individual connections, but we won't really know if it works until we can do a proper test with a full moon. Uh, the weather conditions required by the device are very sensitive, and anticipating them is proving harder than we predicted. I must tread carefully now. Should Woodcutter know that the apparatus is functional, I would have no chance of stopping him. We must keep the work secret. I rarely venture from the house now. The device is too valuable to leave unguarded. Graham called again today. He knows I'm up to something. He tried his best to warm some details out of me, uh, but his attempts at subterfuge were pretty feeble. Uh, this ma The man is an incompetent scientist, but an even more incompetent liar. Josie volunteered vigorously to be the first test subject, and I readily agreed. I'm not going to work. It's not going to work the first time anyway. Looks like something fits here. The, the base reminds me of something. Reminds me of that weird device in the dining room. Device? What are you talking about? It's a small chain holding it shut. Device in the dining room? Is that this thing? Oh. Well, how about that? I have a flashlight, the record, a blank page, and I'm going to probably have to burn it. I don't know. I'm standing right where the man is. The, the guy. Whatever. Uh, let's get this. Oh, chapter 19. Here we go. What? Oh, it says. It starts with, And it was brighter and brighter and brighter than the sun, but cold, so cold, cold. I could see my breath... And it was dark, and I heard her voice. It was the light, and... Oh, is this, like... 
unedited. So it was brighter and brighter and brighter than the sun, but cold, so cold, cold. I could see my breath and it was dark and I heard her voice. It was the light and her voice was the light and the cold. And she was talking to me, talking like my mother used to talk to me, and it was beautiful. The most beautiful voice I have ever heard, and I wanted to go there, go be with her, and feel her skin, and see her eyes, and be her eyes. But it was cold. I could see my breath, and there was an edge to her voice, sharp like a knife. Her voice had another voice under it, and it was sharp. And I thought, maybe that is her real voice, and her real voice was cold, and so hes I hesitated. And then I could feel the warmth, and there was warmth, and it was all over me, and I could feel it, and I opened my eyes and saw the warmth, and it was blood. Well, that's not, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's not, you know, so, yeah, there's something in there. Something going on in here. like a page torn from a notebook mama respectful always outrageous hats simply wonderful adores music never angry not forgotten all alone josephine turner turner oh hello graham wellington wanted fame and glory Josie Herrera wanted to find something precious. Cynthia Peckman wanted money. Bobby Sawyer wanted to be a writer. I wanted to get out of Kansas and start a real life. Now I just want to see my mother again. Hmm. Oh, I can pull it out, I see. A sharp hacksaw blade. Whatever lived here before was pretty messy. Okay. That's it, eh? Is it up here? Too hard to cut with just the blade? What are you talking about, brother? Um... Can I, like, not walk over here? What is the situation? It looks like there's a box right there, and it won't even let me through. I'm s Man. No, it is. Why do you keep playing with me like that? I d oh. I was going to say, now, there we go. Okay, all right. I did not see that before, admittedly. So I have to play. I thought, okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Flip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Powered up and calibrated. Here we go. It's on. All right. It is on. That is cool. Now what?
Wait, I'm hiding in this thing? I just achieved an ending. They're just gonna find me and kill me? That's sweet, dude. Unfortunate. So I'm dead. Don't know where I am. I went all that way and I couldn't live. I guess I tried to hide in some stupid canister instead of making the right decision. So, I guess the way that I ran the first time then was right. And the second time. I just whiffed on the last time. That's cool. Oh, that's sweet. That's good. I like that. Does this ever end? Like, what's the... What do I do? What? <sighs> My head hurts. I think I just lost consciousness. What's happening? Where am I? I don't know if this is the ending I wanted, but okay. Large metal crank. Okay, dude. This guy right now. Swear on it. Harris died today, the whole squad gone. What? The thing is, it should have been me. I was supposed to be on that sub. I asked Harris to switch me this morning right as the crew was boarding. Told him I didn't feel well. I've never liked submarines. Harris was the only person I've really ever thought of as a friend. My associates in Chicago would stick a knife in my back without blinking an eye if they thought it would get them some dough. In fact, I'm sure that's what they intend to do the moment I step off this boat. Perhaps I should see Harris's passing as an opportunity. All of his things are here. His papers, his extra dog tags, the physics books he showed me. His passport is here. Everyone who knew us personally is at the bottom of the ocean. Maybe my dear friend Harris has provided me with a way out. Yeah. Sure thing, buddy. Alcohol. That's lovely. I, I still have all my stuff. I don't understand, but this is an ending though. Because I'm bad. I'm bad at the game. And I just whiffed. On where to hide, I guess. I don't even know. Like, is this the best ending? Is this the worst ending? Crank moment? Rats, there's no fuel. Do I have a cup? No. It's a bucket. <laughs> um...
Yeah, I mean, I don't... I don't know. Oh, there's a newspaper here. What's this? Why do I still have all my stuff? Dude didn't kill me. Uh, Washington to D.C. Today, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Cullen Harrison Act, or Beer Bill, into law. The law gives states the authority to legalize the sale of beer and wine containing 3.2% alcohol or less. For many, the act marks the first step towards dismantling the Volstead Act and ending prohibition. Supporters of the act argue that prohibition has led to a rise in organized crime. A lot of small-time bootleg operations just went out of business, said a local restaurant owner who asked that his name be withheld. Empty jug. Okay, now I get it. Empty moonshine jug. Let's walk this way. Let's walk this way. Wait a minute. I thought this is where the alcohol was. Is it over here? It's over here. It's or yonder. Moonshine. That's, I understand that. Give me some... Can smell alcohol. It smells like disinfectant. Sure does, buddy. Well, alcohol can be used as fuel. In a way. So. Oh, there's a note right there. Bill, I've made an incredibly fortunate discovery. About a month ago, a student came by with an old newspaper clipping he had run across. It was dated 1932 and contained a photograph of four men arrested in a Chicago police bust. One of them is the spitting image of our dear Bullard. Uh, the students thought the photo quite curious, particularly because the man pictured is identified by a different name, James Lowry. I laughed it off as a coincidence and sent the student on his way. That evening, however, I became consumed with the idea that perhaps this was not happenstance after all. Could it be that in 1932, our own Harris Bullard was arrested under a different name? With the right connections, confidential police files are as easy to access as public records. I received today a carbon of James Lowry's 30-year-old arrest report. He was suspected of laundering money for a criminal organization, but was never formally charged. Sometime between his arrest and his release, his mugshot was taken. Thankfully, this photo was included in the documents I received. It is undeniably bullard. It seems that there is more to our mutual friend than meets the eye. Best regards, Graham William. Yeah. Yeah. Where do I put the fuel, though? Right. But where do I put it? Um, I have alcohol. That didn't work. Why didn't it work? What a, what a, bro, like, okay. It's, I understand that. I have alcohol. Um. furnace no way I know that I, wait what what is this I can use this dude All right, buddy. All 
I already turned this on. What? Hey. Yeah, this is probably not gonna, like, be good. when I get absolutely clobbered by this guy right now. What the? Why do I just leave or what? What? A what is happening? Was that Graham Wellington, by the way? Oh, because of moonshine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, there's a... Oh, I see. Oh, and then these are the doors for... Wait, can I just take this off real quick? This was annoying earlier. I'm aware of that. Can I just take it? Okay. Um, okay, so I'm still playing then. I thought... I said achieve ending B. I don't get that, but okay. I saw the record. You have a weird statue. Flashlight, blank page. So all things that can be, you know, worked on. In here. To put the pieces together. The dead man in the underground room. Um, I think that's James Lowry. Okay, then it's Graham Wellington. Wellington's dead. That means the man in the raincoat is somebody else. Harris Bowler died. James Lowry took his spot, so he's dead, assumedly. There's no way it's Bobby. The truth about Harris Bowler is that he is an imposter. Because he's actually he's actually James Lowry. The man we know is Harris Bowler is really James Lowry. He stole his identity, but then where's the robot at now? Just a few more riddles to solve. Dude. What was that? I don't know. I don't particularly Okay. Um, there's gonna be a secret message. I think. Again. I think. Dear Josie, I sent the documents to Washington like you wanted. What? Uh, today they sent me a telegram confirming your suspicions. Um, James Lowry and Harris Bullard both served in the same Navy unit in the South Pacific. Lowry is listed as MIA and presumed dead. I talked on the phone with an inspector in Chicago about the woman you told me about, Rosanna Turner. Um, he wouldn't send me the file he wouldn't send me the file but i told him it was research for a book and he gave me some details the woman was apparently strangled by a burglar but the weird thing is that nothing of value was stolen just a box of old documents by the looks of it the case went cold in 1946 and it has been sitting in the unsolved homicide files ever since josie i don't know who these people are or what you're up to with this research all of a sudden but this is getting scary if you're in trouble you give me the word, and I'll make sure Bullard never bothers you again. Bobby. So Bobby's, like, really mad. Alright. Um, so that's that. I now just have the record, the weird statue that was missing, and then the flashlight. So, I don't know. I can go back into the, uh, place, but let's go here. First... And this is not something that I particularly want to do. So maybe endings, I, I mean, I don't know. That was like a second chance or something. But somebody's clearly still here and doesn't like me snooping around. What? 
dude. I get it. <laughs> he died. <laughs> um. Small key. It looks like the kind used for a padlock. Oh, that's the freezer. Dear Harris, I understand. I understand why you have not responded to my previous letters, why you have made every effort to avoid me, why you never wrote me during the war. I didn't want to admit it, but I'm tired of playing the fool. You found someone else. You don't love me anymore. I understand. God, she's intolerable. I'm not even angry with you about it. You are a vile man. I thought you had died in the war, and yet here you are, living without us in Chicago, pretending to be out when I knock on your door. I wanted to look into your eyes and ask you for the truth, but I don't need to any longer. You can rot in that little apartment of yours for all I care. What I do not understand is how you could do this to your own child, our child, the child you have never even met, the child I have raised for the last five years while you were doing God knows what in the Philippines, the child who has a father that came back from the war and won't even visit, won't even call. That you no longer want me, I understand, but for what you have done to our little one, I will never forgive you, Rosanna Turner. Oh. Wait. Oh my goodness. So maybe the address is circled on the back. That was it. I don't really want to go out here, but I kind of have to, so whatever. Wait a minute. Where's the record player? I thought it was out here. Is it not out here? Oh god, I thought it was out here. Where's the record player? I'll go around. I don't know, dude. I thought it was... Oh, it's right here. It's right here. Oh. God, I'm glad I turned back a second. Uh... I... Dude, just let me... Okay, I'm not gonna wait on this, I'm just gonna go. Charming basement. Okay. Thank you.
pretty much all I got left. Hypothermia kills in a matter of hours and leaves no mark. Bullard died in his freezer, or was it James Lowry? Now that I've gathered all the pieces, I just need to put them together. A scientist with a past, a dead colleague, an ex-wife down on her luck, a girl with no father and a boy with no future, a snow woman, a full moon. Now I just need to get out of here alive. You're okay? Hey there, buddy. <laughs> Maybe that same stupid thing. Oh no, here, yeah, I see. So if you achieve an ending, A, B, C, D, you're not allowed to come to the end of the hallway. You have to go back. So, okay. So now this is the ending ending, I guess. Keep going. I don't know where I'm going. Who killed Harris Bullard? I I think it was Josie Herrera because her original name was Josephine Turner. Burn down the house, I guess. Body in there? I don't get it. I can't go anywhere. I barely managed to pull Josie from the house as it burned to the ground. All of Bullard's research, his equipment, and his secrets burned with it. Josie Herrera was arrested for the murders of Harris Bullard and Graham Wellington. Yep. My story of blackmail, 
murder, and my narrow escape from a deranged killer made headlines. In January, I start at the Chicago Tribune. I never told them about James Lowry or that Josie's last name is really Turner. Those secrets are mine alone. Wow. So I got the final ending. I guess ending A, you just die. I'm assuming ending A, the first time you get, uh, you get uh, chased, you just don't make it and you just die. Ending B, same thing. Either that or, the, yeah. And then ending C, I guess just leaving at some point. When you're, when you're outside. This is it, yeah, it's not, it doesn't. Oh, hello? What is this? I'm curious, I don't know why, it, this game, one thing about it, it doesn't have like a... Like, does it even let me through? I just picked the next key over? I don't know. Uh. Oh, this is ending B? What? Okay, I'm wrong. So, just trash the game. Search for Patricia Gable. Presumed dead. Young reporter from Colby vanished without a trace two weeks ago. Okay. Uh. Okay. Yeah, that makes a little more sense. Considering it's just not what happened. So I was right the first time. See if I, if I choose Cynthia. My thought is that it's just going to be the same thing here. Right? I mean, like, what would be different? Yeah. It's the same thing. See, and it's still just ending B. Like, if you choose wrong, this is just what happens. Um. Well, I have to... I got D, S, and B. A, he's got... So then A and C are just when you die. Those other times, I guess, right? Or just, like, you get sent. I guess? I don't know. Um. Okay. In any case... Great game. Nice little fun short game. So glad I got it. Glad I paid it, played it. I like stuff like this where it's kind of like, you know, you do some reading and stuff, but you get, you know, some secrets and like, uh, it kind of reminds me of Pain's, uh, Pain's Creek Killings, which was much longer, but man, I love that game. So, uh, yeah, I will probably be back soon with, um, with more. I have definitely a lot of games kind of similar to this or like puzzles etc um puzzle mystery adventure stuff uh that i'm excited about of course when the talos principle 2 comes out um i can't imagine that i'm not just gonna take off of school or and or ask off of work and just make sure that i'm just grinding it uh, as soon as it comes out because that's like my like i've never been more excited for a game i don't think in my life um 
but yeah, so we got plenty to keep us busy until then, and then even after that, you know, play it. It's not going to be the last thing I ever play, but... Uh, so, if you're watching it now or in the future, hope you... And I will put this on YouTube, so hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, or night, whatever applies to you, and hope to see you at the next stream.